When I was in medical school, my professor taught me that multiple sclerosis didn't cause pain. My professor was wrong. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for people impacted by MS from around the globe, both in the office and on telemedicine. We're currently accepting new patients and enrolling for clinical trials. If you're interested, call the number at the bottom of your screen. Today, I want to tackle an important topic, pain in multiple sclerosis. Pain is awful and invisible. Honey, you look so good. And in fact, there are many kinds of pain that are common in the setting of multiple sclerosis. Starters, I like to review some pain vocabulary words. Paresthesia is a doctor term which references numbness and tingling. Example would be banging your elbow on your funny bone and then your hand goes numb. That is a paresthesia. By definition, it doesn't hurt, although it certainly can be very annoying. The term dysesthesia refers to painful abnormal sensations. These could be a burning sensation, a freezing sensation, a crushing sensation. It's typically something very unpleasant. Paritis is a doctor word for itching. And itching is a special type of dysesthesia or neuropathic pain. The next term is allodynia. Allodynia means that light touch doesn't feel light, it actually hurts. And you can have any part of your body impacted by allodynia. The word dyspareunia refers to pain with intercourse, something that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. The first type of pain that I would like to describe is that associated with optic neuritis. Optic neuritis is a phenomenon where the nerve that runs the eyeball becomes inflamed and swollen, and that can result in diminished or lost vision in one eye. However, when you talk to someone suffering from optic neuritis, they will almost invariably also tell you that it hurts when they move their eye left and right or up and down. If you think about the, the eyeball and the nerve behind it, so let's pretend this is the eyeball and this is the nerve. As you move the eyeball in the socket, it tugs on the nerve. And if that nerve is swollen, it pulls on it and it hurts pretty badly. Optic neuritis pain is something unique to optic neuritis and unfortunately commonly seen in the setting of MS. It's fortunately treatable. When we give high dose corticosteroids to quell the inflammation, the vision returns and the pain resolves. The second type of pain seen in MS is trigeminal neuralgia. Now the trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve and it supplies sensation to the face. There's actually three branches. The first branch which covers the forehead, the second branch that covers the cheek, and the third branch that covers the jaw. And if that nerve becomes squeezed or damaged, you can have an abnormal fake sensation of pain being sent back to your brain. In other words, you're not being electrocuted, you're not being shocked, but it feels like you are. And this is actually one of the most intense pains that a human being can experience. Now in multiple sclerosis, we can see trigeminal neuralgia more often than the general population, and it can be harder to treat. Because in MS, we don't just have to have a risk of damage to the peripheral nerve, but actually damage to the pawns, the structure the nerve comes out of, in the brain can be damaged. And this can make it very hard to treat. The third type of MS pain is Lermite's phenomenon. Now Lermite is a dead French guy and he described the following phenomenon. If you bend your neck forward, you feel an electrical zap that starts at the base of your neck, down your back, into your legs, down into your toes. It literally feels like you just got electrocuted and it can be triggered anytime you bend your neck. This is caused by an MS lesion to the back of the, the cervical spinal cord. And when you flex your neck, you're literally pulling tension on the cord and causing that lesion to fire. It's called an aphaptic discharge, and it feels like you're being electrocuted. I've had patients who are so bothered by Lermites that they literally will kind of move like Frankenstein. They, they don't want to move their head at all because it hurts. Lermites phenomenon is unfortunately all too common in the setting of MS. Anyone who has ever met me knows that I'm a hugger. I love the hug but I don't want you to have the MS hug. MS hug is the fourth type of pain discussed today. 
It's a phenomenon where a spinal cord lesion triggers the muscles between your ribs to contract violently and squeeze. And quite literally, you feel as if you're being crushed or squeezed. It's terribly painful and oftentimes confusing. Many people who experience MS hug will first present to the ER with concerns of chest pain, as if they're having a heart attack or there's a problem with their lungs. And those things check out and they still have the pain. And it's caused not by the heart or lungs, but by the nervous system. Damage to the sensory pathways in the brain and spinal cord can result in number five, dysesthesias. If you remember from the beginning of this talk, dysesthesia means abnormal painful sensations. And it's all too common that people in my practice share that their hand feels like it's on fire or their foot feels like it's ice cold, or their arm feels like it's being squeezed. These are dysesthetic pains, and they're very common in the setting of multiple sclerosis. I like to call out one specific type of dysesthetic pain, and that's pathologic itching. Pathologic itching is a form of neuropathic pain. It's not exactly painful, it's itchy, and it can drive you bonkers. There's no rash, and you can't make it go away by scratching. Number six is a big one, spasticity. Over 70% of people impacted by MS suffer from spasticity, where antagonistic muscles argue with each other. So if I wanna bring my arm to my face, I need my bicep muscle to get shorter, but I also need my tricep muscle to relax so that I can bend across my elbow. Now, I don't tell my tricep, hey, tricep, relax. I just bring the coffee to my face. My brain and spinal cord orchestrate the bicep contracting and the tricep relaxing. When you have damage to the brain and spinal cord from MS, you can lose that coordinated movement. And so when you're trying to bring the coffee cup to your face, when you're trying to contract the bicep, the tricep is also trying to extend at the exact same time. And the result is a tug of war across your own arm. Now, spasticity can occur in the arms or the legs and it typically manifests in one of three ways. The first one are limbs that are hard to bend. So trying to bend your knee to get in the car can be really challenging. The second is a spasm where a limb will bounce. Now, typically those two manifestations of spasticity are not painful, but the third one is super painful and that's cramps. A cramp is a visible contraction of a muscle belly. You can have one in your calf or your hamstring or in your back, and it will drop an adult to the ground in extreme pain. Number seven is pain associated with a urinary tract infection. People impacted by MS are at higher risk of experiencing UTIs, and a urinary tract infection can hurt. People can have an un unpleasant sense of fullness in their bladder, and it can burn when they urinate. The eighth type of pain in MS is migraines. A migraine headache is defined as a moderate to severe headache. It does not need to be the worst headache. A moderate to severe headache that includes some nausea and some sensitivity to light. Now, oftentimes the headache is throbbing and it's unilateral, and it doesn't always have to be on the same side. And sometimes people can have an aura where they see shiny lights and then they get a headache and migraines can take you out. Migraines can be so severe that you can be stuck in your bedroom with all the lights out under the pillow crying. Number nine is dyspareunia or pain with intercourse. Now this can occur from a multitude of causes. There can be neuropathic pain in the vulva or in the penis. And so light touch can hurt, allodynia. You can have abnormal vaginal dryness, or you can have spasms and cramps of the down there's. All three can result in painful experiences during intercourse, which certainly ruins the mood and is not remotely sexy. Number 10 is joint pain, but it's indirect. Let me explain. Multiple sclerosis does not damage the joints of the body. However, if MS has caused you to walk in an unusual manner, maybe you have to lean over and flop your leg over, or you have to hike up your hip, and you've changed the dynamics of how you walk. That puts undue stress on the soft tissues of your legs and hips and, and on your knees, etc. And over time, you can cause damage to those areas. We will see some patients impacted by MS that ultimately end up getting a knee replacement by banging up their knee over years of walking abnormally. Number 11 is shingles. Now, MS doesn't cause shingles, however, some people impacted by MS are treated with immunosuppressant medicines. And in the setting of taking an immunosuppressant, 
you can have an outbreak of shingles. Shingles will cause a rash, a red rash, across a patch of skin, and it is extremely painful. So I include shingles as an 11th type of pain seen under certain circumstances in the setting of MS. Great, Aaron, 11 types of pain, super lecture. But wait, there's actually plenty of ways to treat neuropathic pain. And I'll start off by sharing, narcotics are not the answer. Quite honestly, narcotics are very poor at treating the kinds of pain I've described. And today I'm gonna to talk about medicines that are much more effective. Number one, if you have an acute bout of optic neuritis or transverse myelitis, and as a result have pain with extraocular movements, or because of the transverse myelitis, you're having dysesthetic pain in a limb, when we treat the underlying attack, when we give high-dose corticosteroids, we can quell the inflammation and we can help resolve the pain. And that's always awesome to see. If you have a chronic pain, we can use neuropathic pain medicines, medicines that in fact were originally created for other purposes and we've discovered work really, really well to manage pain. The two most common classes are anti-seizure medicines, medicines like uh, Lamotrigine or Lamictal, uh, Topiramate or Topamax, things like Pregabalin or Lyrica, or Gabapentin, Neurontin. All of those medicines I just listed were originally invented to treat seizures, and they're good seizure medicines. They stabilize cell membranes, which stop seizures in the brain, but they also stabilize cell membranes in other places, and they can stop the transmission of neuropathic pain by stabilizing the areas of damage. And so we use these medicines quite commonly. There are also a host of anti-depression medicines, which we're applying not to treat mood, but to treat pain. These are things like duloxetine or Cymbalta, very effective to treat pain. We use old school tricyclic antidepressants like uh, amitriptyline or norotriptyline, Pamelor and Elevil. We can use other antidepressant medicines, and the goal here is to manage the neuropathic pain. If you're suffering from a urinary tract infection, you need an antibiotic. But you can also take an over-the-counter medicine called Azo, A-Z-O, which can help anesthetize the bladder so that it doesn't hurt so darn bad. Now, you don't just want to take the Azo. You need to take the antibiotic. Otherwise, you'll mask the pain but still have the infection. To manage spasticity, we can do a host of things, including stretching, staying flexible and mobile, taking medicines like baclofen or Xanaflex, receiving botulinum toxin injections, or even baclofen pumps. There's a lot that we can do to manage spasticity pain. With regards to orthopedic concerns, if you're having joint damage because of walking in an unusual fashion, we can use neurophysical therapy to retrain your gait mechanics to improve the way that you walk and save the joints. If you'd like to learn more about pain and MS, Click the video that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and I want to thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video or my next live stream, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, take care and be safe.